So today we'll be looking at the problem word break. So this is another common dynamic programming problem. So let's just jump right into it. So given a non-empty string s and a dictionary word dict containing a list of non-empty words, determine if s can be segmented into a space-separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. Note, the same word in the dictionary may be reused multiple times in the segmentation. You may assume the dictionary does not contain duplicate words. So let's look at these examples. So s is our string, so we're given leak code. And then we are given a word dict with leet encoding it. And so the reason this returns true is because leet code can be segmented as leet code. So that is valid. Similarly, with example two, we have apple, pen, apple, and our word dict has apple and pen. And so you see there's two instances of apple and then one instance of pen. It's still true because apple, pen, apple can be segmented as apple, pen, apple. And also we are allowed to use uh, or allowed to reuse a dictionary word. So that's why Apple is used twice. And then finally, we have example three, uh, cats and dog, with cats, dog, sand, and, and cat. So for cats and dog, word dig contains cats, dog, sand, and, and cat. While all those individual words are in our string, the fact is it still returns false because we can't use all those words uh, within our string. So we can use cats, dog, and maybe, but then we won't be able to get sand or cats because they overlap each other. So that's an issue. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a dynamic programming problem. So we're first going to look at a brute force approach and why it's not optimal. And then we're going to optimize it by implementing a dynamic programming approach. Okay, so first let's look at a brute force approach. So the quickest way that we could solve this is we could just use a form of recursion or backtracking to essentially check every possible prefix uh, of that string in our dictionary of words. If we find it in our dictionary, then the recursive function is called for the remaining portion of that string. And if in some function call, it is found that the complete string is in the dictionary, then it will return true. So essentially you just think of the first approach as checking every possible combination uh, within our string and just checking, or taking all these combinations and looking within our word dict to see if we have either leet or code. So as you can imagine, this is a lot of overlapping work because uh, we're just essentially looping over the string several times to try and generate, you know, different prefixes that might be within our word dic dictionary or list rather. And so as you can probably imagine, this isn't the most efficient approach. Um, if you want to take this to the extreme, imagine you have uh, an input string like a, 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 like this. So this would take upwards of O of N to the nth power. This gets really bad because imagine if we have a word dict with, you know, a, 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 and so on and so forth, like different variations of a, if we're going through this input string, then, I mean, we would be doing a lot of work because there's essentially a being used throughout and there's different combinations of a, and so we need to calculate all those. So definitely not ideal. So. This is not a runtime we ever want to strive for, so how can we improve this? Well, we can implement dynamic programming. And as usually the case, we implement dynamic programming when we encounter overlapping subproblems. So with uh, both of these, AAAA and leak code, you can imagine like on a recursive tree, uh, a bunch of work being done several times. I won't draw it out because it'll take up a lot of space, but just imagine like when we recurse on like a substring, there will be a lot of other instances of that substring within that recursive tree, uh, just so we can look for our matches within our uh, word dict. So with dynamic programming, we aim to eliminate this by essentially using, at least in the instance of this problem, we can use an auxiliary uh, list. And essentially the list will be a list of Booleans. And we'll use that information to essentially tell us up to a certain point if we have a match uh, within our word dict input. So for example, if we're looking for the word leet in our string, we can start from the beginning and then continuously move. And then once we find, or once we get to T, we can say that this entire substring right here, will have two pointers. So like I and J, you can think, and we'll have those two pointers and we'll say from I to J, the substring here is that within our word dict. If it is, then what we can do is mark the index where t is as true. And so with that, what true essentially signifies within our auxiliary dynamic programming list 
is the fact that up to that point, we have a match with one of our strings within our word dict. So this isn't making sense. I'm gonna draw this out so it'll be more clear. Okay, so let's create our auxiliary array. So I'll just call this DP. And so with DP, we'll essentially use the last index of a substring that we found within our input string and check if that substring is within our word dict input. If it is, then we can set the end index of that substring that we found to true because we know that the index where we set true at, we know before that we have an instance of one of the strings within our word dict that match. So the substring that we found before or up to the point of the true that we just set at that index is within our list, our word dict input. So how this will look is, or with this being said, one of the first things is we need to establish a starting point for us. And so we'll actually create the DP list one greater than the length of our string. And so the reason why we add a plus one buffer to our auxiliary list is because we need a starting point. And so the starting point will always be true. And the reason why it's true is because the first input represents a null string. And so a null string is present in any string. That will be where we start. And then from there, we can move through our input string. So we can move through S and we'll be able to essentially keep two pointers and use those pointers to extract a substring uh, from our input and then check if that's within our word dict. If it is, we'll set the last index of our substring to true to indicate that we found that that substring is a match. Okay, so with leak code, we have eight characters. So we'll put, I put T and F. Uh, so T is true and F is false. Let me just fill this out. And so just to help you guys visualize, I'll put the respective characters, you know, the index that these are supposed to represent. All right, so we have our starting point right here, uh, index zero, which we set to true. And then essentially all we wanna do is we wanna use a nested loop. So we'll start off with a for loop and if DP of I, so if the current index happens to be true, like it is right here, then we enter another loop, which essentially is the range of I all the way to the end of the list. And so essentially what we're looking for here is we're trying to extract a substring. Uh, it's going to be between, in the second for loop, uh, the variable will be J and the outer loop will be I. It'll, we'll essentially try to extract a substring from our string with the outer loops variable I, and then up to J plus one. So what this will look like is we start off with I right here, and then we have J. And then J will loop through until we find a match or if we find a match. So J will come here, 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 all the while checking uh, if this is within our uh, word dict. And then eventually when J comes here, this will essentially indicate that our substring at this point is leet. And that is within our word dict. So what do we do? Well, we set this particular index to true. And so what I've been saying earlier is now that this is true, so th this is the end index of leet, right? So leet, leet right here. And so what this is indicating is essentially all past characters represent a substring that is within our word dict input. And so that's what this is signifying right here. And so the logic here is that if we do this for our entire list, the very last value should return true because that means that we've used up every character within our word dict. If at any point we process or we go through our entire list and then we return the final value and it happens to be false, then we know that not, we know that not every match was properly found in our inputs. And so we know then that the answer can't be valid. So it'll return false. And so that's kind of the logic behind using a, essentially a Boolean array uh, because it'll let us know point blank, like, at the end of the day, when we process everything, did we find our answer or not? So eventually I will come over here to let's say right here as we move through the list. And again, J will move over and over and over. Eventually J will end up right here. And so what this is telling us is now this variable right here, S I to the J plus one, Essentially what this is saying, this is Python notation for slicing. In this case, we're slicing a string. So this will say 
at index i up to j plus one. So j plus one is not included, so it stops right before it. So i up to j plus one. What this uh, substring will be right here is now code. And so we look and we're like, okay, is code in word dict? Yes, it is. And so what we'll do here is we'll mark this as true, again, indicating that we found another match uh, within our word dict. And then since we reached the end of our list, we return DP, we'll say negative one. And so this is just Python's way of saying, uh, get the very last value. So we get the very last value right here, and that happens to be true. And our final answer, you know, is, is true. So we've gone through this entire list and we've been able to identify that leet and code are within the input string. So therefore this is valid. This actually works. And this is congruent with the first example that we saw in the leet code problem. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we'll be jumping into the code soon, but before we do that, I want to discuss the runtime. And so with our approach, since we're using essentially uh, two for loops, so we'll have one for loop, and a second one, so for loop one, for loop two. The reason for this is because we use the outer uh, to establish I and then the inner for J, and this will be essentially our exploration. So we can use that to identify substrings like right here. And so naturally by now, you should probably be familiar with the fact that if we have a nested for loop, it means that we're doing N squared work. So that'd be O of N squared. O of n squared isn't the best runtime, but it's still way better than n n, where n could be anything. So for this particular problem, that's about as good as it's going to get. So that's our runtime. And then our space complexity will be O of n. Uh, reason being is because we construct um, you know, our auxiliary DP array. Uh, with dynamic programming problems, if you have to construct an auxiliary data structure of some sort, then it's going to be you know, O of n, usually. So this is our space and then runtime. Cool, so this is it for the dynamic programming approach. So now we're going to go jump into the code. All right, so let's dive into the code. So first things first, we wanted to have a layer of safety. So uh, what we can do is actually create a set uh, from our word dict. And so this will essentially remove any duplicates. So we can just do that real quick. Word dict set. Equals set word dict. And so next, uh, since it's dynamic programming, we're making use of a auxiliary list. In this case, we're going to call this DP. And this is going to be a Boolean list because in the conceptual walkthrough, I talked about how we're using a Boolean list to essentially mark the endpoint of a substring that is found within our set. So we'll set this all to false for now. And we'll multiply this by the length of s, so our input string plus one. And so the buffer, the plus one here buffer is important because we're adding the extra space just to account for a null string. And so that'll actually be our starting point. So let me actually set that real quick. So dp zero, so the very first index will be true. And so what dp zero here is saying is we have a string that we're trying to compare. In this case, you know, s could be leak code, but the one thing that will always remain true is a null string. So null string is present in every single input. And then from there, we're looking at other different combinations. And so that's what the plus one is here for. We're just essentially setting that as a buffer so we can make sure the first element is set to true. And then the rest of the list is of length S. And at that point, we can sort of uh, build up our approach. All right, so now that we're iterating, what do we wanna do? Well, we want to check if the current index within our auxiliary array is true. If we encounter true, which we will, the very first starting point right here is true to account for the null string. So we'll start off with a true. And then what will happen here is we'll enter another for loop. So for j in range of range of i to length of s. And so i will essentially be right here. So we'll start at wherever i is and then go to the end of the, the string. And so that's what j is. And so essentially what we're doing here is using Python's uh, string slicing to determine a sort of window or substring within our string and then checking if that's within our set. So that'll look like this if s i j plus one in word dict set. If we find the word, then we want to set the very last index to true. 
j plus one equals true. And so this just tells us that when an index is set to true, or we're confident that previous to that index, we have a substring that matches a word within our set. We essentially do this for the entire string. And then at the end of it, we just return the final value that we've built up in our auxiliary dynamic programming array. So we'll just say dp minus one, which is Python's way of saying get the last element. And everything looks good. We have our set, we construct auxiliary lists at the initial value. Uh, if true, then we create a sub window to try and find a word or substring within our string that's in our word set and set that to true. So yeah, this looks good. Let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so the initial case of leak code does pass. So let's submit this. All right, so that's the answer. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this problem and I'll see you guys in the next one.